All right, so section 3.2, substitution method. And uh, pretty sure the elimination method's in here, too. Uh, you actually did a little bit of substitution method with IXL, so we're just going to kind of do a refresher on it and jump into the elimination method. So we're going to solve this guy with the substitution method. It's kind of like the example I went over on the quiz. It really, really is. It lends itself nicely to substitution. So what you do is you scan both equations, and you see if there's one of them that it's easy to solve for either x or y. So you guys are looking at this system right here. Do you see an equation where it's easy to solve for either x or y? Yeah, we're going to solve this thing for x because it's easy. That's why we do it. Because it's easy. It's one step. What's the one step? Subtract 3y. So x is a 3 minus 3y, or negative 3y plus 3. Nobody really cares. They really don't. Nobody cares about standard form on intermediate stuff. Usually makes it harder. So you know what x is? Plug it in the top equation. Where? For x. Don't be the kid that doesn't get this. This is pure common sense. That was x. There's an x. Twice a 3 minus 3y three plus a 5y is a negative 5. Distribute. Plus 5y is a negative 5. Hold on, let's slow down. Three or four of you know in here what you're doing. The rest of you. You got some catching up to do. <coughs> so anyways, how many Y's you got? You got a negative six and a positive five. Oh, why is it negative one of them. I believe that positive six should be moved over. What happens when you jump? What happens to your sign? If you move a positive six to the right hand side, what happens to it? It turns into a negative. So it's kids. So Grant, what was negative five minus six? What kind of eleven? Eight or eleven. If negative y is equal to a negative eleven, what's our actual positive y value? Eleven. Well, there you What's the last step? Bring it back in. I would go with that little equation that we wrote right up here. But that's me. Which, by the way, is probably how you should think as well. I'm not always the best at this stuff. Sometimes kids find little shortcuts. But usually they don't. So you have 3 minus 3 elevenths. What do you have? Negative 30. So you got an ordered pair here, and these answers are supposed to be reported as ordered pairs. Negative 30 and 11. Now we're going to skip the U-try, and we're going to go straight to the elimination method. Uh, let's see here. Step one. Pick a variable to eliminate. You either pick on X or Y to eliminate. Pick one of the two. The deal is here, you kind of pick the easier choice. Is it easier to eliminate X or is it easier to eliminate Y? Step two, multiply one or both equations by constants so that Either the X's or Y's 
have same number in front of them. Doesn't necessarily have to be the same number. One of them can be positive, one of them can be negative. Okay, they have the same number in front of them. And step three is add or subtract the two equations from each other. You did this in algebra one. We are not in algebra two. You did this. I swear you did it. I remember doing it in eighth grade in Palmersville. So I don't want to hear that you're a junior and you've never seen this in your life. In the eighth grade in Palmersville, you did this. You'll probably remember doing it. You'll probably remember you didn't like it. I loved it. I like numbers. I guess our first example, we probably don't have to do any multiplication. I don't remember how easy it is. Yeah, yeah, we do. Solve using the elimination method. And I don't care what you pick on. It can be X or it can be Y. Trent, you want to go after X's or Y's? Let's try this again. Chandler, you want to go after X's or Y's? X's. So that's kind of your first decision. What do you want to attack, X's or Y's? And Chandler picked right. It is easier to pick on X than it is to pick on Y because we want that 3X and a 6X to both be the same. And we are allowed to multiply one or both equations by a constant to make it that way. What equation do you want to multiply by and what do you want to multiply by? Top one by two. Top one by two. These do not lend themselves up for substitution because you end up with fractional things. They're not meant to be done with substitution. Elimination method is easier. So we double the top equation, and literally you double everything in it. When you double everything in the top equation, what do you get? A lot of kids think that this like breaks algebra. It did not break algebra. Because you maintained balance. As long as you maintain balance, anything you do is a valid operation. You can multiply everything by a smiley face. It'll still be balanced. It'll just have a smiley face attached to it. As long as it's balanced, it's balanced. Now, I said in step three that you could either add or subtract. If you add, will you eliminate your excess? How about if you subtract? Yeah, that's the deal then. Subtract. So I'm going to take away the bottom equation from the top equation. You have to be careful with signs. You have to be careful with signs. You can't just look at the sign in front when there's a negative out front. But 6x minus 6x is 0x, which you don't have to write down. Next line is a negative 14y take away a negative 8y. Negative 6y. Because you're doing negative 14 plus 8. Equals 12. So this piece right here is kind of garbage. It's 0x. I mean, there's no point in it being there. Y is negative 2. That is the elimination game. I mean, you just played it. And now you can open up substitution. Can't you? Which equation? Does it matter? No. Probably it's easier. Well, then that's the one I'd go for. It's all about making it easy. If the bottom one looks easier to you, plug it in the bottom one. If the top one looks easier to you, plug it in the top one. So 6x minus 8 times a negative 2 must be 8. That's right. Sam says you have a positive 16 there. It belongs on the right. I subtract it. Keep going. Why did you sound scared of dividing by six? Well, 
Oh god, you get a fraction. Who cares? It doesn't make it any harder. You don't have to go to your calculator and figure out that that's negative 1.333 forever. Who cares? Just a fraction, kids. Oh, it is. You should be representing your answers as ordered pairs. So your answer is negative four thirds and negative two. Now, I have this check it. I will only do that one time with you. But check it, which is really awesome on a multiple choice test, just saying. How do you check your answer? Plug it back in. And it has to be true. Four, false, four, both. If you get a true for both, it's the answer. If you get a true false, it's not. If you get a false true, it's not. You just plug it back into both. So I've got that original equation, 3x. x is a negative 4 thirds minus 7y. y is a negative 2. It's supposed to be 10. Yeah, there's a 14. What do the threes do? Negative 7 times negative 2. Threes cancel. It's that old fifth grade math. And it's negative 4 plus 14, 10. Yeah, so it's true in the first one. You do have to check the second one. Because if I make a test and stuff like this is multiple choice, a lot of times the answer pairs will work in one equation, but not both. So you plug it into the second one. What's 6 over 3? 2 times a negative 4. Negative 8. Negative times negative is positive. 8 twos makes 16. Well, what happened here? Oh, I wrote down the equation wrong. Okay, 6 divided by 3 is what? 2 times negative 4. That's true. Got six minutes. Let's do one more of these, and we're going to do the word problem. So you look at that one. Not quite as easy as the last one, but you just have to make a choice. Do you want to pick on your X's or your Y's? And, and you do need to be thinking about what's easier to work with. Is it easier to work with things that 3 and 4 enter or things that 6 and 7 enter? Things that 3 and 4 enter. I mean, everybody in this room should know what 3 and 4 both enter. They both enter what? They both enter 12, kids. So, what are we going to multiply the top equation by? 4, and how about the bottom one? So, we'll 4 the top, we'll 3 the bottom. And don't be the kid who doesn't write down the next equation. Oh my God, I've seen that kid every year of my life. That kid never does good. He screws everything up. It takes 20 seconds to write down the next line. You four everything in the top. You got 12x minus 24y equal to 36. If you three everything in the bottom, you got a negative 12x minus 21y. plus 21y, equal to a negative 48. And you know, in the last equation, we did the subtraction property. You, just, you can add them. Yeah, believe it or not, addition and subtraction are the same exact thing. One's the addition of the negative. So I would add these together because then I would have how many X's? Zero of them. That's the goal. That's called elimination. How many Y's would you have? Negative three of them. 
And what's the constant? Negative 12. So we have a y value of 4. Then I reckon we'll take that y value and we'll plug it in somewhere. I'm going to go for the top equation. It looks easier to me. So 3x's minus 6 4's must be a 9. I reckon that's a 24 there. You can add 24 to 9 or subtract 24 to 9. Add it. It's 9 plus 24. 33. What's our x value? 11. Please give your answers as ordered pairs. Because this goes back to graphing. The first thing we did on solving systems is graph. It goes back to graphing. So what's your ordered pair? 11-4. I'm not going to talk about the one with no solutions. I think I'm going to talk about the word problem. Before I do, any questions? I'm not trying to rush you, just constrained for time. It's typical math class. Never enough time in math class. So here we have a word problem. John is 12 years younger than Brady. In three years, Brady will be twice as old as John. How old are they now? Well, I guess you need to write some equations. I'm not going to call one of them X and one of them Y. John is J, Brady is B, okay? Our variables will literally be BJ. There you go. It took you a minute. So John is 12 years younger than Brady. How can you write that out as an equation? That's right. J equals B minus 12. John is 12 years younger than Brady. You're going to have to take away 12 from Brady. This one over here gets some kids. In three years, Brady will be twice as old as John. Hmm? Well, are both, are both kids aging by three years? So you have to actually do that first. John plus three equals something about Brady plus three. John plus three equals something about Brady plus three, because they both age by three years. Brady plus three is multiplied by two, not just the B, all of it. But they have to age first before you worry about the doubling. You can't just say two B plus three without parentheses because it will not work. I don't think it will. Well, it's been a while since I've done these two. Anyways, we should have two equations. Is this elimination or substitution? Substitution. You know what Johnny is. And hold on a second. I was listening to y'all. You doubled the wrong thing. You have to double John plus three. Brady will be twice as old. It takes twice John. So let me scratch this line out. Yeah, we're still going to plug in for J this B minus 12. But you have to double Johnny's age, not Brady's. To make them equal, Johnny has to be doubled. I see a J, I'm going to replace it with B minus 12. Anyways, take away 12, add 3, you're at 9. And then you double it.
you know, like I said, kids screw this up, and I was listening to y'all, and y'all did the common mistake. You doubled the wrong thing. You got to pay attention to what you double. You need to understand why it's Johnny that we double. Because it takes two of him to be Brady's age. And I know you know that, but when it comes to equation writing, it all goes out the window. Anyways, what property gets kicked in now? Distributive. Twice B minus 18 is a Brady plus 3. I would do Bs on one side and numbers on the other. If you take away a B from a 2B, what do you get? A B. B is 21. So right now, Brady is 21. So in three years. No, no, no. The question is, how old are they now? We know Brady is 21 now. So we go back to this. 21 minus 12. John is 9. 